Welcome to the FormFox lab-based urine collection user training module. This training is designed to help users understand the basics of using FormFox for a non-federally regulated urine collection with the FormFox system and assumes that the user has some working knowledge of the specimen collection process. In this example, we will be starting the collection using the account number button. Refer to the Getting Started training module for information about other ways to start an exam or collection event. For this example, we will assume that the donor does not have a pre-order. For this instance, you will tap on the purple colored link and start collection using account number. After tapping the account number link, you will see a menu of laboratories. Account specific information can vary from lab to lab. Therefore, you must select the lab which will be processing the specimen in order to generate the right CCF. For our first example, we will choose Quest Diagnostics. The iPad virtual keyboard defaults to the alphabet characters. To type in numbers, tap the key in the bottom left-hand corner with numbers on it. Once all the fields are entered, tap Search. On the next screen, select Create New Test. On the next screen, verify the donor information, filling out all of the required fields. If the donor cannot provide a phone number for either the evening phone number or daytime phone, enter NP. Verify identification by viewing the donor's photo ID and selecting Photo ID. If there are extra fields requiring more information to be entered, enter the information. If the laboratory account is linked to only one drug test panel, FormFox will automatically select that panel. If the laboratory account is linked with multiple drug test profiles, select the preferred panel by tapping on the text of the preferred panel and hitting Submit. The donor should select the specimen cup to be used and then enter the restroom to void. On the next screen you can record vital information about the test. If the donor is unable to void into the cup or insufficient volume is provided, the collector should suspend the test by tapping the button entitled Unable to Void, Suspend Test, Donor Refused. On the next screen, under Current Status of this collection, tap the down arrow to the right of the list. Select the appropriate status from the choice provided. Add required remarks in the space below and tap Next. Choosing to suspend the test indicates that the donor will reattempt to provide a sample at a later time. Choosing any of the other options will end the collection. Remarks will always be required. A new collection container will need to be used when the donor is capable of voiding into the collection container. To reopen the test record, use the Open Collections tab and select the name of the donor from the list. If the donor was able to provide a sufficient sample on the first attempt, or if after suspending the test, the donor is able to provide a sample after drinking some water, and if the sample temperature is within the acceptable range, click the Yes box. If the donor provides a sample outside the acceptable temperature range, tap the No box. You must select one or the other. Once you tap Yes or No, a button appears to the right which says Temperature Out of Range or Suspected Tampering. If the temperature is in range and you do not suspect tampering, you can proceed to the next line. If you tap No for Temperature Range or you tapped Yes but still suspect tampering, tap the new button to the right which says Temperature Out of Range or Suspected Tampering. The action is very similar to the type of interaction associated with the suspended test. Under the heading Current Status of this collection, tap the down arrow on the right hand side to see the full list, then select the reason for concern. This step also requires calling the designated employer representative, the DER. The DER contact name and DER phone number should be visible so that the collector can contact the DER. After contacting the DER, the collector should note the DER's instructions in the Remarks field and click Next. If the collection is a split specimen, indicate by tapping the radio button. If the collection was observed, select the appropriate box. Select the courier that will be used for shipping the collection sample to the lab by tapping the down arrow on the right side of the drop-down menu. The donor must watch the collector pour the specimen from the collection container into the specimen bottle or bottles, and then the collector places the FormFox specimen ID on the specimen container, dates it, and has the donor initial the label. Discard unused FormFox labels or place on the outside of the specimen bag. The next step is to scan or enter the FormFox sample specimen ID into the FormFox collection screen from the specimen container seal. This is done by tapping the scan barcode box. The tablet camera facing forward will become active. 
Position the barcode of the label attached on the container into the highlighted window until it comes into focus. Please note that if you are using an external barcode scanning gun, you will need to point and shoot to capture this barcode. Re-enter the sample seal specimen ID in the verify step if entering manually. Then tap the sign affidavits box. The donor can sign the tablet directly with his or her finger or a stylus, or if using a signature pad, use a stylus that comes with this external device and then select Accept Signature. Otherwise, if a tablet or signature pad is not being used, the donor can sign with a regular pen after printing the final CCF. Then the collector signs and taps Accept Signature. The final step is to tap the Generate CCF box and print. Click Print. Observe the CCF, including donor name, from the preview window. Print the CCF from the preview window. Assure the CCF prints legibly before closing the preview window. At this point, you should print a copy for the lab and one for the donor. All other copies can be transmitted electronically. Select Finish to close the record. Give the donor the donor copy of the CCF. Package the lab copy of the CCF inside the bag with the sample and attach labels on the outside of the bag so it can ship to lab. The lab will be able to receive the information electronically and scan the CCF in the bag to match the sample up with its records. If unable to send an MRO copy to medical review officer electronically, you can print and or fax the MRO copy. This concludes the training module. Thank you for your attention.